Hello everyone. QDSQ data here. Today I wanted to share how I'm thinking about the course and maybe I can get some feedback in the comments. So let's get started. So how I was thinking about the course was first to build the foundation. And while building the foundation, we'll first look at probability and statistics. And then we'll spend some time on Bayesian data analysis. Then we'll cover linear algebra and calculus. And Bayesian data analysis is kind of might overlap with this, but we'll spend a lot of time on Bayesian data analysis, maybe a couple of months. And we'll just look at optimization, most relevant parts of it. And we can come back to optimization based on what people want. And once we have spent like a lot of time with foundations, uh, which is mostly probability stats, linear algebra calculus, and a lot of time on Bayesian data analysis. Then we'll go to machine learning and the way to think about how applied scientists do machine learning. And I'll we'll look at a lot of examples in code. Uh, so this is the demo part. And obviously, when we reach the end of the course, we'll not look at code for every possible model we are looking at, but I will provide links and so on, right? And I've been thinking about what are the important tools so that you get to be a good practitioner. So we'll cover Python, most relevant parts of Python. We'll look at NumPy and SciPy. And we'll look at Pandas and PySpark for data aggregation analysis. Right. And we'll also look at uh, data visualization tools like Seagorn and Matplotlib. We'll also look at stats model because at least ordinary least square in this model, the way we use it is very similar to how we write it in a textbook or causal inference or um, an R code, right? So we look at uh, ordinary least square from this model. Uh, for deep learning, automatic differentiation, any numerical computation, we'll look at PyTorch. Uh, for probabilistic programming, we'll look at PyDo. So the thing is, there are two universe, right? Uh, two dominant ones. One is PyTorch and another one is TensorFlow. So almost everything we can do in TensorFlow, we can do in PyTorch. And almost everything we can do in PyDo, we can do in TensorFlow probability also. So it's a difficult choice, but I was thinking like maybe PyTorch is slightly more intuitive and easier to use and more exposed. Uh, there's a PyTorch lightning thing uh, which structures your code in a nice way. So yeah, I mean, these are equivalent. If people want, we can look at both. But yeah, I mean, the goal is, so if you know any one of them, it's not that difficult to move to another one. So I've decided that we can go with PyTorch and PyDo for most part. Maybe in some parts we can look at this. And obviously if you know these and the foundations, it's not that difficult to understand the code for TensorFlow or TensorFlow probability. Obviously we'll look at scikit-learn. It has a lot of standard uh, machine learning models, algorithms, feature engineering, feature selection and so on. Right? We'll also look at XGBoost because we are covering XGBoost theory, so we need to use the library. We'll also look at approximate nearest neighbor uh, from Facebook AI. So this is Fire's library, which is Facebook AI similarity search. Uh, we'll look at Wapel Wabbit because there are a couple of algorithms not covered in any of these libraries. For example, contextual bandits. Uh, we'll look at implicit. It's a library for the recommendation system. Uh, we'll look at fast API, which is mostly about building a local API, at least for this course, but you can deploy it on a server. We'll also look at a workflow tool. I'm considering multiple tools, but I feel like I've recently come across a tool called Metaflow. It's, it's a Python-based workflow tool, and it's very easy to use, right? So, this is what I have been thinking. Uh, 
and I've been looking at various options, various textbooks, uh, and thinking about what are the right set of tools to know. And we need that thinking, right? Uh, and the right level of abstraction for the right problem is the way to go. So this is a very high level idea of uh, how I was thinking. Uh, this is a more detailed uh, structure. So basically we'll do some kind of intro and we'll look at what the course will cover with at a very high level. Uh, and yeah, this is a course on machine learning. So anything else is more like auxiliary things. So we might not spend too much time on those. We'll look at version control because the habit of versioning is very helpful in long term. So we'll look at some basic Git commands and how to collaborate with Git. Uh, we'll look at some basics of Python, anything standard in Python, we'll look at those. Uh, here are a set of libraries I've been thinking. NumPy, SciPy, Stats, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, Scikit-learn, PyTorch, Pyro. So PyStan is another Python library, which is basically Stan is a library in R, uh, which is extremely popular among statisticians. And there's a PyStan interface to it. Uh, maybe we'll not cover this because Pyro or Tensor Popularity should be able to handle any case. Uh, plus these work on GPU as well. Uh, yeah. We we'll look at a workflow tool. We we'll look at fast API, like how to uh, build a machine learning API, right? Then we'll start with fundamentals. So we'll look at a bit of probability space. Uh, so all these are work in progress, but yeah, I mean, uh, we we'll look at some probability. We we'll look at data analysis and statistics. We we'll look at descriptive statistics, uh, measure of spread, measure of central tendency, pertussis. Uh, we'll look at sample estimates, uh, confidence intervals, hypothesis testing, uh, ANOVA, analysis of variance. We'll look at various important plots to look at the data. Uh, and then in Bayesian data analysis, we'll almost uh, spend a couple of months. So we we'll look at Bayesian inference, linear model, and causal inference. Causes, confounders, colliders. Uh, we look at sampling. We look at modeling integers. We look at multi level modeling. We look at missing data modeling. Right. And this is also work in progress, and there might be some duplicates later on, but I'm working on it how, how to structure it in a unique way. And then we look at linear algebra and calculus. And mostly the relevant parts will not like. Have a like a semester long course or linear algebra, right? We'll we'll just look at important parts. We'll look at it application. We'll look at the code and so on. And the thing is, you could code everything yourself, but it is not the best use of your time while learning the right way of thinking, right? So mostly we'll use libraries. We'll understand the fundamentals, but we'll use libraries. Uh, Again, we, uh, in the calculus part, we'll look at mostly chain rule, gradient, Jacobian, Hessian, uh, higher order function approximation, and so on. Uh, we'll look at a bit of convex optimization, convex objects functions, conditions of convexity. We'll look at one application of linear programming, which is bipartite matching. And uh, kind of this is used in Uber, right? To match drivers and uh, riders. So this also connects to incentives and platform we'll cover later on. Uh, we'll look at a bit of NumPy. Now, once we have covered most of the fundamentals, we we'll look at machine learning and the way most people do machine learning, right? Uh, like applied scientist way of thinking. So we'll look at linear regression, anything relevant to it. Uh, we'll look at feature engineering, different ways to do it. I'll not, I, I don't want to read the whole thing, but uh, mostly at a high level, we are looking at variable types, 
different type of transformations you can do, imputation, how to input text images, ratio or rates, entity rates, how to uh, as a present graph node, date time, feature scaling, handling outliers, feature selection, feature learning. Feature learning is basically more machine learning model way of encoding features. Anything that you can see here will be covered here or later. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, algorithms to learn features. We we'll look at quantile regression. Uh, we we'll look at logistic regression, how to handle population imbalance. We we'll look at naive based its assumption, graphical models, uh, we we'll look at empirical risk minimization, structural risk minimization, cross validation, decision theory. We we'll look at trees, classification trees, regression trees, exibus, random forest bagging, boosting. And a couple of algorithms here, right? SVM, nearest neighbor, neural networks, recurrent networks. We'll look at uh, unsupervised learning, where we'll look at clustering, K means mixture models, spectral clustering, mixture density networks. We'll look at dimensionality reduction, PCA, autoencoder, variational autoencoder, isomaps, multi dimensional scaling, word embeddings, so on, right? We'll also look at very practical standard algorithm, which might not fall in the standard ones like page rank, AdWords problem, calibration is another technique uh, to make probabilities more interpretable. Uh, we'll also look at certain things beyond supervised learning, transfer learning, semi-supervised, active learning, future learning. I mean, these are one point, it feels like that, but uh, we'll look at a couple of algorithms in these. Uh, we'll look at learning from interaction, and uh, this is the space of partially observed data like uh, recommendation system, reinforcement learning, bandits, right? Uh, because just imagine, right? If you are browsing a Netflix website, the model chooses what you see when you click on something. If you if the model would have shown you something else, you would have clicked on something else, right? So the model while training doesn't observe everything. And that is the nuance which makes it interesting. The data dynamics is interesting. So learning from interaction is something we'll spend a decent amount of time. Uh, we'll also look at fairness algorithms. Uh, like we'll also look at how uh, discrimination happens uh, in the real world and in historical context, there has been a um, couple of cases, uh, even under the legal system, where there was discrimination and companies had to pay a lot of uh, money to get away with it. Right? So not get away, but yeah, to compensate the people who were impacted. We'll also look at fair embeddings. It's a nice paper which talks about fairness and how to learn fair embeddings. Uh, we'll also look at applied econometrics. There might be some overlap with what we have previously covered, but it's uh, it's mostly two parts. One is uh, null hypothesis significance testing or A-B testing. And inside A-B testing, uh, there is a statistics part, which we, will, we have already covered above. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's more about uh, A-B testing in practical settings, trustworthiness, end-to-end -end example, ethical issues, how to ramp up experiments, uh, AA test, long-term treatment effects. And there's another part to it, uh, which is mostly like we have observational data and can we ask a couple of causal questions and probably answer them in the right way. Then we are revisiting neural networks again with more sophisticated uh, models. We look at computer vision models, classification, semantic segmentation, object detection, video classification. Uh, we'll also look at sequence models like RNNs, LSTMs, and now transformers, uh, okay, like GPT, but we have been looking at chat GPT, right? So uh, we'll cover these algorithms. We'll cover graph neural networks, multimodal bird, diffusion models, multimodal models. We'll look at a couple of research papers, uh, which is that uh, wide and deep architecture, wide and cross. We'll also look, spend some time looking at uh, a viewpoint on platforms. 
So this part is incentives and platforms. We'll look at a bit of mechanism design and how pricing and auction works in a platform. We'll look at nuances of two-sided markets uh, in advertising. Uh, we'll look at a couple of slightly larger case studies uh, like multi-stage advertising system, Netflix artwork recommendation, Uber matching algorithm, Amazon next item prediction, and the impact it had on their uh, on their business uh, and tools we have already covered in the slides, right? So this is what I have been up to. Uh, this is something I, of course, it's a work in progress, but I think uh, this is kind of roughly where it should be. There's some polishing needed, but yeah, I'll, I'll share the link of this doc uh, on the description. And I'll also uh, share the link of the form. If you're interested in this course, please fill the form. Maybe in a couple of months, three months, four months, uh, I'll start this course because I don't want to uh, be in a situation where I've not prepared everything. So maybe I'll take a couple of months to prepare the course, but please fill the form if you're interested. And uh, yeah, so yeah, but I can assure you uh, the content we are covering uh, is enough. Anything else? Um, yeah, so see the main goal is, can we be a good practitioner? We should be comfortable with all these models and underlying algorithms. We should not be unfamiliar with an algorithm before we use it. Uh, there have been situations uh, where I might not have known the underlying algorithms, uh, like very to the dot, right? And uh, I, I, at least for me, it is a very embarrassing if I don't know exactly what the tool is doing. Uh, so spending some time understanding the algorithms and practices is very important. But the main idea is um, making us familiar with all these tools and the underlying algorithms. And of course, uh, the structured setup. Um, and even before starting machine learning, maybe we'll have some models in Bayesian data analysis, but we'll spend a lot of time uh, doing Bayesian data analysis and probabilistic programming kind of things here. And this is very different from uh, how people do it. Uh, even statistics, while doing A-B testing, uh, there's a template people follow, there's a huge graph and all those things. You look at it, but uh, it's more about thinking, right? How, how we think. And I've been looking at, uh, a lot of books and I'm thinking what what is important, what is not. And I hope like at the end of this course, we probably would have covered uh, a couple of books, three, three or four books. So yeah, I mean, that, that's it. Please fill the form if you are interested in the course in the description. Uh, there's a form link, there's a link to uh, these slides and uh, this doc if you are interested to look at it at your own pace so yeah this is what i had for today thanks